Hello everyone, it is me, Sav, and today we're gonna to be actually doing a informative video instead of just our usual vlog style. One thing I wanted to do when making this YouTube channel was not only just kind of like show uh, what we as tattoo artists do, but also make informative videos to help. So one that I've kind of missed and I feel is now a good time to do is red flags for tattoo artists. And before I go any further, I just want to quickly say that content warning, we are going to be talking about harassment and assault. So if you find that this is hard to listen to, please uh, just go watch another vlog instead or something happier. Um, but I do find that, or I will say that I think this video is going to be helpful and just keep you alert when going into your tattoo appointments. As someone who's been tattooing for seven years, I have heard an unfortunate amount of stories from clients who have had uh, really bad experiences with artists. Of course, I'm never going to use names or anything. I will say, like, as I talk about these red flags, I'm going to just say the artist, they, them. I'm not going to use he or she. And you know, again, I've been tattooing a very long time. I've experienced it myself as a client and also as a tattoo apprentice being preyed upon by tattoo artist men in the industry. Um, and I'm already saying it's not all men because I know a lot of amazing tattoo artists who are men and who have been great, comfortable, been tattooed by them, lovely humans. It's just unfortunate that most of the stories that I'm going to share were done by male artists or again, the experiences I have were with male artists. Um, I'm not gonna touch on my experiences. I'm just going to use them as examples and other people's examples for things to look out for when uh, getting tattooed by tattoo artists. But the reason I am making this video is because I have heard some very disturbing and unfortunate news about Archie from Blood Orange. So I do not support him. I unfollowed him. Uh, I do not recommend going to a studio. I'm not going to touch on it in this video because I don't feel comfortable doing that. But you can find it all on Instagram under, I think it's, I'll put the Instagram as well here, but his Instagram I'm pretty sure is Porter Tattoos where he talks about his experiences and uh, shares handful of victims experiences. And yeah, it made me feel pretty sick to my stomach reading all this. Of course, had I known, I would never have gone to that studio. It's everything I stand against and yeah, it was it was hard to uh, know I had been in that space and supported it. Um, it's been a few weeks and that I should just make a video like this because I think it could help a lot of people because I think as gatekeeping as tattooing still is, that means also not knowing what tattoo artists are going to be like or the etiquette they should have with clients and that you should expect of tattoo artists. So I will do my best. It's going to be a difficult video for me to even get through. It can feel a little triggering to me. So if my wording kind of seems not as eloquent as I would like it to be, just know that my brain is right now. So we'll do our best together. I'm here to support you and I feel your support already as you're watching. Let's get into our red flags. I did write them down on my phone, so I will be going through them. Of course, I may forget some, so if you have any that you have experienced and feel comfortable with sharing, I'd love to know what you think is a red flag in the comments. Obviously, you don't have to go into your own personal experiences. So let's get started. Oh, I'm going to draw a little cute like pictures here, I think, just to make this video a little, a little bit lighter with cute images of the thing I'm going to talk about. Okay, one of the red flags would be that the artist is texting you. This is a profession, they should act professional. That's always going to be the main thing here is that every tattoo artist should treat their job as a profession. Even though, you know, we're kind of on 
an outer cusp of a proper job or the nine to five, I still think we should act as professional as we can, especially since tattooing has changed so long ago. So texting, I think, is inappropriate. Again, these are just things I'm going off that I have heard or have experienced, and some people may disagree, and this is totally fine. Um, these are things I just think that clients should look out for that might need this information. So texting, I think, can uh, be invasive to someone's uh, personal life and also the tattoo artist's life. If they're texting you and texting you just things not about the tattoo or it could get a little too personal or if they're texting you late at night, I think email is a perfect middle so there's no phone number shared. I don't give my number out to any clients as I just think that there are boundaries that should not be crossed. If there is a work phone, sure. Giving out my own personal number is uh, a no-go for me. Staying late could be a red flag. If a tattoo artist is saying, oh yeah, we can start your tattoo like, I've been asked to come back at midnight, so I'm gonna use myself as an example here. Out of shop hours can be a red flag. I don't think that an artist should be offering a tattoo at midnight. Kind of weird. Um, or let's say for any reason, the tattoo is just going very late into the hours and maybe it's just you and them and you're starting to feel just kind of uncomfortable on your own. You should feel like it's okay to leave if, and continue a different day. You don't have to stay late into the night. If you don't want to, you can leave. Another red flag is they are making inappropriate comments to you. They could be commenting on your physical appearance or making inappropriate jokes or things, comments that like you shouldn't say to someone who is pretty much a stranger to you or is in a vulnerable state because they are in a sense paralyzed as you are tattooing them and can't quickly leave the situation. There's been instances where comments have been made about a person's body or skin color or clothing choices or um, you know, even tattoo artists making comments about self-harm scars, which is very inappropriate. So the next red flag is inappropriately touching or clothing removal. This is one I've heard so often, which is just artists touching inappropriate spaces on the body that aren't even getting tattooed. If you are being touched in any way that makes you feel uncomfortable, please leave. Don't feel like you have to stay. I know like with like fight, flight, freeze, fawn, kicks in, it can be hard, but maybe even if it's your first appointment, bring a friend so they are there and there's someone else. So any touch that is not where the tattoo is, um, or even without consent, like, hey, uh, your shorts need to be a little higher. Do you mind yourself rolling them up? So like, let's say if there's a tattoo on the knee or above the thigh kind of deal. I always ask my clients if they mind or if I do need to like touch the clothing fabric, like, is it okay? Consent is a very big thing, but I have heard stories of like tattooing arms and then touching their leg and it's just unnecessary. Asking to remove clothes completely is also inappropriate. I usually like will communicate with my clients, like if it's gonna be in certain areas where bathing suits, or pasties or something that's loose and easy moved fabric on the area so they don't have to be completely naked. Some clients are like, yeah, here, here you go. And I'm like, okay, that's your prerogative. And if you're comfortable with that, that's fine. We also will offer privacy screens in case there's other people tattooing with their clients and they don't wanna be seen so we can like block off this area. Another red flag is if your tattoo artist is drinking or smoking during the tattoo appointment. I have worked with people who have smoked weed before starting a tattoo because it helps with their anxiety. So I'm not going to say it's completely inappropriate because some people just focus better with it. I get it. Yeah, I've definitely heard of people doing like the white stuff in bathrooms before appointments. That's obviously not okay and not sanitary. Your tattoo artist should not be drunk. They should not let you be drinking during your tattoo as it is a natural blood thinner. It's just kind of not a good idea. You know, drink as much as you want after. You, you can drink after the tattoo. Pictures. Taking pictures of the tattoo is in our consent form. We give the client the option to sign it and say they are okay with us taking pictures of the tattoo after it's done. If they don't sign it, then we won't take pictures of the tattoo. We only take pictures in the area that is tattooed. We will never take more than what's necessary. 
I know some artists that I've seen on Instagram do like these kind of almost like boudoir shoots with their clients now and it's like here's their whole body and this like small tattoo on their side which I yeah it's artistic it's pretty but it's not for me one thing too is sometimes I will ask my clients to send me a photo of the area that I need to see for the tattoo drawing and I will specify if you are comfortable in this email please send me a photo of the area or maybe you can uh, set up a time to come in and they can take a picture of the area they need to draw for in person so another red flag is kind of going back to something I already mentioned but is asking you out after the tattoo this is something I can relate to and I've heard stories of is tattoo artists asking clients to go out unfortunately I've heard many stories where it doesn't turn out to be a great idea it, it, tattooing is just a vulnerable time already it's something that should rarely happen especially after the first time even if you two are vibing just come back get another tattoo maybe see before really hanging out with another tattoo artist i personally wouldn't even feel comfortable asking a client that there's definitely been times where i'm like wow i really liked that person and vibed with who they are as a person and the their personality and their hobbies like they're super cool i hope they come back so i can talk to them more but i've never thought i want to go out with this person now after um and i'm not saying uh, relationships can't form from a client and artist. Usually though, it forms after multiple sessions, getting comfortable with one another. I've made like three friends over several years of tattooing them that I now like hang out with outside of the tattoo world because we just bonded and they came here often and I was like, you know what, yeah, you are cool and I feel like we're on the same like wavelength so let's hang out and that can happen and does happen. I've even heard of people who end up like dating their clients, but I think it that is a long trusting road and doesn't just happen. I'm not saying this is like, don't, your artist is like, ah, it's just like respect each other and build a relationship like you would with any other person. And if you know, you don't want that with a tattoo artist and you don't feel comfortable saying no, um, cause no can be just a scary word to use against someone. Think of a different way. Just be like, you know, maybe they're giving you like flirty vibes and you're, you're too scared to say no. And maybe you just lie and say, oh, I have a partner. Or if they want to hang out, you could just be like, oh, like I'm, I'm just really busy right now. It's not a good time. Think of other ways around no to say no. This is one I've heard many times and gives me the biggest ick. I know that's what the cool kids on the, the TikTok say, is you have to come alone. You never should have to go alone to your tattoo appointment. If you do not feel comfortable going alone, don't. You should always be allowed to bring one person. I'm not saying bring like a whole party of people because even that would annoy me, but you should be okay to bring one person. Or even if they don't come in, they're just like around the area. So you can like message them, let them know how you're doing. But yeah, I have heard many, Many are horror stories that start with uh, come alone to your appointment. It's immediately to me just gives me a creepy vibe. Even saying it, I don't like that. This is a fun one that I think is uh, still a very common thing to this day. Pro tattoo talk. And I don't know why this is and I've experienced it. I've heard the horror stories. Again, it's not all men, but I'm just gonna say most of the times I've heard it, it's with a group of tattoo guys where they are just talking like stinky, stinky talks. I don't get why that is though. Like why do they feel like, who are they peacocking for? Is it for you? Cause it's gross and I'm not feeling like, ooh, take me now. Even as a tattoo artist, I still feel like, I don't know. There, is it something to prove? I can't speak much on this. Maybe I should like interview a male tattooer and just like break this down because I feel like there's so much to this one that is just like little pieces that just kind of gather like talking about some bitch that they saw on the weekend, talking about how much they drank last night. 
bro, this area I tattooed was bleh, like this and that. And like, if you're sitting there waiting for your tattoo and you're hearing this bro shop talk, like that's uncomfortable. Do you really like want to sit there and still get tattooed by this person? Or worse, like know that when you walk out the door, they could be talking about you like that. And I'm not saying like you need to go to like a, a non-male tattoo shop and I get it's like a vibe and everything, but another red flag is pressure to get the tattoo. Let's say you show up, the design isn't really what you wanted, the tattoo, or maybe the vibes are just off with you and this tattoo artist and you're not there. Um, if they are still trying to pressure you to get it, big red flag. You should definitely just get the heck out of there because you're probably going to hate the tattoo and the memory along with the tattoo. That's another thing. If you end up getting a tattoo by an artist, you might even like the tattoo itself but just have had a bad experience with that artist and now that's kind of stuck with you that kind of sucks so you should never feel pressured to get a tattoo if it's not what you expected for the design maybe the artist is like okay i will have to change it but you know there is a drawing deposit which is very normal and you might have to just pay for extra drawing that's what it's there for and you might get rescheduled but no artist should like pressure you like you need to get this tattoo don't do it just be like, you know what, no, no thank you. Uh, or even, again, if you're scared to say no, be like, I'll think about it. Uh, and then uh, ghost them. <laughs> you probably should not ghost people, but you know, if you just feel uncomfortable with that artist, maybe it's okay to ghost that person. Another red flag is if they tell you to come to their house to get tattooed. <sighs> that's just a big one that's, I think, always going to be an issue, but I would just highly recommend never going to someone's house for a tattoo. They might be new and not know what they're doing, so as we call them, scratchers. That's a term that we use for people who don't know how to tattoo. Or, you know, you're in their house alone. That's scary. <laughs> this is law right there. Uh, this red flag, I feel like, is just kind of common knowledge. But again, I've heard horror stories where people experience this, so... Uh, is cleanliness. How does the shop look? How is it presenting itself? Is it seem like there's just mess in everywhere? If they're that messy in the studio, how much cross-contamination is happening between your tattoo and someone else's tattoo? This is a story uh, example was being told that a client went to a tattoo artist's house because they didn't realize it was a house until they got there and when they walked into the space to get tattooed, there was a little, little dog doo-doo on the ground with two dogs running around. And I think the artist was like, oh yeah, we'll get that later. Yuck, ugh. So no houses, no unclean places. Probably as cute as pets can be, no pets around your open wound. Um, I don't know if this is a red flag, but uh, just not feeling welcomed in a studio. I know it can feel like there's an ego in tattoo shops. Even if maybe the artist doesn't, I think there's just this immediate air that a tattoo artist is gonna think they're very cool and a uh, newsflash, we're not. I think that's all the ones I can think of right now. I want everyone to be just safe and aware of where they're going, who they're getting tattooed by. And you know, honestly, like, I think what it comes down to is trust your gut. There have been many, many a times I think we can go to places and, you know, our gut instinct is kind of like telling us that something's off. And I think just really trust it. If you're, if you're not, if something's saying like this isn't it, it's probably not it. So just understand too that tattoo artists will have boundaries as well. The good ones anyways. If you've had a bad experience, I'm sorry, you went through that. Um, there are always options for tattoos. I know they are permanent, but there's laser. Uh, there's artists who are always willing to do cover-ups. Try and take the tattoo and make it yours again. It's scary for any situation to come forward. And I'm with you in, in these two. I've experienced it myself. And as soon as one person comes forward, more people are bound to as well. And that there's always a support system. And it's unfortunate that our tattoo industry experiences this so often. I know a lot of people are sick of it, including myself. We just try 
and make this space as comfortable as we can and yet time and time again it's proven that it still has a long way to go but that's not going to stop me from fighting the good fight and trying to change that and spreading awareness and calling out the artists who do this awful stuff and say awful things and well i will never stand for it and i will never support it and i will support you yeah i hope this video wasn't too heavy we'll have more fun stuff coming up we did a pride event a few weeks ago look for that one and then after that we have some guest spots coming up pretty soon here so i hope you had a good time hanging out with me because i had a good time hanging out with you i think that's gonna be it i'm sorry this was such a heavy video but it's important okay bye bye